Hello, hello, welcome to Aus Jetty. This is, uh, um, well, a little pier that was built uh, actually several hundred years ago from the 1750s to the 1860s and uh, it was used for loading ships with iron ore which was then shipped away for smeltering. Now after Kiruna was opened in the north of Sweden these small mines like the ones here on Alner they were no longer really economical so the whole thing died down but the jetty is rather beautiful because it contains many rocks from Alner Island. It's like a catalog of rocks from the island. So I'll show you a few. Have a look here. So here we have some caponatite dikes. I've showed you those before. So here is the dikes and there's a little dikelet and veins of caponatite in some uh, epicyanide or magmatitic country rock. And if you look on top of here, they're getting a little bigger. So here we have more of the carbonatite and it's got flow banding and rather beautiful and it's lying right next to a kimberlite type rock here. This is this uh, bluish grey rock and uh, if you come a little closer it's got nice uh, pyroxenes in there and also some olivines and uh, here you have a fresher surface here you see the crystals in it it's porphyritic and uh, there's some darker facies or bands in there so this is the kimberlite type rocks unfortunately uh, people have looked for diamonds in those and there's no diamonds in them here and uh, if you look just over there there's a servite uh, coarse grain crystalline carbonatite and similar servites of the pegmatite facies are just behind me here as well So if we look here for instance, if you come a little closer you can see the calcite crystals and some pyroxene and it's interlayered with some remnant material of the country rock. So here you see the coarse crystals of calcite here in this pegmatitic servite. And here's another one of those pegmatitic servites. Have a little look here. Beautiful large elongate crystals of calcite intermixed with uh, some pyroxene, some case bar, some nephilin. Uh, the case bar is usually the kind of reddish, uh, pinkish mineral, and then the nephilin is the grayish um, uh, mineral, and then the calcite is the whitish mineral. If you look very closely, it's got beautiful cleavage in there, and it seems to occur in bands of concentration of certain minerals. Here's the darker bands and the lighter colored bands. So uh, this may be a flow facies during the initial emplacement. So here's a few blocks of the actual iron ore that was transported that were left behind. So here is a uh, magnetite block. It's almost exclusively magnetite and if I put a magnet on it, it holds. So and it's got this typical sheen to it. The uh, magnetite has a special kind of <clears throat> shine I feel and uh, beautiful crystals of it and just over there there's another one of those here it's a very magnetite rich with large magnetite crystals and again the magnet holds on it this was the material that was shipped out from here and uh, this was then smelted to extract the iron for the industrial revolution at the time up to the 1850s so here's another block of uh, servite and here you see again beautiful large crystals of calcite like these guys here and some pyroxene, k feldspar, a little bit of nephilim in this one as well and uh, this is a kind of uh, a mixed silicate carbonatite rock uh, it's got the silicate minerals as well as the carbonatite component being the calcite here and you see some large calcite crystals up there And this is right next to one of these rocks here. This is a mafic rock with uh, some nephilim and the nephilim on the surface it weathers almost yellowish and if you come around to this side you see this even better. And there the nephilim has a yellowish touch and uh, this is a cancrinite. It's an alteration product of the nephilim and it's only on the surface if you hammer the rock the nephilim would be pretty fresh inside for most parts and there's also some case bar in there and uh, here you also have a very coarse grained uh, facies of this platonic mafic alkaline rock 
and uh, all of these rocks are exposed here on Oz Jetty by simple human action by piling them up. So we continue here on Oz Jetty and uh, here's another servite. This time it's a uh, different facies, very coarse. Outside here you see the rhombic texture and then there's a grey mineral without a clear cleavage. That's the Nephilim and uh, beautiful coarse textures here, platonic textures, unlike the more um, prismatic and elongate crystals we've seen in the other servites just a second ago. So here more rock types. Here's a pyroxenite with some carbonatite veins. You see it's very coarse grained. The dominant mineral there is pyroxene, hence the name. And uh, there's a little bit of mica in there as well and some others. But this is likely a cumulative type rock which has uh, concentrated these mafic silicate minerals. And then later there was veins of carbonatite going through this. Right. Next to it is uh, what I would call a migmatite rock. This is the former country rock, but this got messed around and uh, this got heated up. And we've seen a few examples in outcrop of this. And uh, they are quite ductile when they were in contact with the magma and they were oxidized as well. And they got plastic and you see indeed there's a bit of a carbonatite intrusive pot or vein here in this country rock sample. Some people would call it an epicyanite because it's got most of the silica components uh, affected and some of the quartz was stripped out, therefore leaving it as uh, an alkali rock and if you will, a secondary type of cyanide. So we continue on Ars Jetty and uh, here is a glacial block, this is foreign, this is more of a diorite nature, probably from the north and uh, this hasn't really been forming here and you see it from the rounded shape but uh, just uh, over there is uh, a cyanide uh, pyroxene, uh, sorry, um, uh, servite pyroxene rock with the banding. You see the carbonatite, the servite, the cores, carbonatite bands, and then you have uh, pyroxene rich bands, and they likely were coming in together. So this would be a silico servite, i.e., a mixture between silicate minerals and carbonate minerals. And just over here, we have another one of those rheomorphic migmatite type rocks. Uh, these were the country rocks at the time of the Alnurg uh, intrusion and uh, they were stripped of some of the silica rich components, they were phenotized and these uh, are now a cyanitic composition but this is a secondary phenomenon hence the term epicyanite or uh, rheomorphic cyanite as we use it here on Alnurg. So here's another one of those servites and here you have beautiful large calcite crystals Here's some of the country rock, the old migmatite that is uh, intruded by these uh, crystalline or well now crystalline materials of carbonatite and this is right next to another one of the country rock boulder spot. Here we have some kimberlite type dikelets or veins in there, this bluish grey that is characteristic of these alkaline uh, mafic magmas and there is another one, a fine one here. So this is kind of almost uh, pervasively intruded with small veins in between and this all sits right next to one of the coarse grain pyroxenites which has also a carbonatite component as you see here, lovely nice calcite crystals. So not quite as exciting as the block I've just uh, showed you a few seconds ago with the large crystals. So here we have uh, a large uh, country rock block that is intruded by this uh, kimberlite type rock and again the color is typical. It's very characteristic with a bluish kind of sheen and uh, this is very um, fine grained, it's almost aphoric, it doesn't have any large minerals but the block right next to it over here that has large micas, large uh, biotites and uh, also a little bit of flocopite and uh, then we have some calcite next to it. So this is a um, component of calcite, of, of carbonatite in this plutonic silicate alkali rock and there's pyroxene here as well, that's the prismatic one but these biotites are just beautiful. They have six sites and uh, they're well developed so and they're rather fresh. So gorgeous rock and this is 
rather typical for the alkaline silicates on Alno. The Alnoide has also these large crystals of biotite and phlogopite, and uh, this is a beautiful example of that. So, why don't we just come over here? Because here we have a mixed carbonatite silicate rock again, and this time we have very large pyroxenes and uh, medium grained calcite here. So, here we have large concentrations of pyroxene and I'm gonna do a little test to see if it's magnetic if there's any magnetite in there but no it is dominantly pyroxene no magnetic phase in there I think all the iron minerals were loaded on ships here on the jetty and were transported away for smeltering rather than left behind we almost reached the end of the jetty here's a few more blocks I think it's getting a little bit similar now but here's another coarse grain servite with a pegmatitic growth very large calcite crystals a bit of case for and some pyroxene in there it's sitting right next to a finer grained uh, mafic rock with loads of pyroxene so this is a hippobissal pyroxenite as they would locally call it here and uh, this sits right next to a migmatite country rock that is intruded by some uh, kimberlite type vein and also by a coarse pegmatitic uh, silica servite which has again the large calcite crystals lost case bar a bit of nephilim and some black pyroxy So here one of the uh, large uh, blocks of country rock with again one of the bluish grey uh, kimberlite type intrusions and uh, it's a beautiful kind of uh, contact you see here. There's a bit of interfingering where the uh, dike tried to kind of break away almost including pieces of country rock in it and uh, the contact beyond it is rather sharp so uh, here it was even trying to exploit fractures if you think but it seems to have failed to break this particular piece away nevertheless beautiful intrusive contact of in this case a sheet intrusion of kimberlitic material into the magmatized country rock so now we're at the end of the pier of the jetty here and uh, here is another kind of alveolite kimberlite type rock the fine grained alkaline mafic rock and if you come a little closer come over here you can just about see it so here's a large boulder but as I said before unfortunately no diamonds have been found in them to any significant uh, extent here is another one but it's got a carbonatite component in the fine grained matrix as well as as veins and uh, this is a bit coarser grained but it's of the same type and uh, here one of the finest of them all at the very end of the jetty is uh, this pegmatitic servite block and uh, it's just outstandingly beautiful look at these textures it's almost like a spinifex texture of uh, calcite crystals and there's some finer grain bands uh, of, um, of carbonatite here's a bit coarser and we have concentrations of pyroxene here as well with a bit of hayfeld spar but uh, these textures here are just brilliantly outstanding as far as I'm concerned and uh, I guess it deserves its place here at the far end of the jetty because it's the jewel in the crown as far as I like to think of it. So that was my little kind of uh, tour of Ars Jetty which is a catalogue of rocks from Alne Island and uh, thanks for coming along it's been a great pleasure again so I say bye bye and I hope to see you soon again.